It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. Wait, I already did this gag before, didn't I? That's not good. People are gonna think I recycle my own content if I recycle my own content. In this list where I talk about SpongeBob episodes that I've already talked about, this is going to be a disaster. I know, I've got the perfect solution. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. I've, uh, been waiting a very long time to do this list. Top 10 Worst Episodes of Spongebob Squarepants. I actually tend to have a rule about doing these top 10 lists of random shows, and that I like to only make these lists when the show is dead and gone. I'm okay with one out of two in this case. I usually do it this way because I'm a completionist. I don't want to do a top 10 list of a show and have another random episode that comes out of nowhere that's worse than everything that came before it. Like, for example, Spongebob You're Fired, which, by the way, came out seven and a half years ago, and I reviewed it when it was new. Is it illegal to feel like you're 80 years old at 28? As you may or may not have noticed, Spongebob has been getting back on track since season 10 or 11. While many would argue that it's not as good as it was during its golden age, it's much better than it was in seasons 4 to 8. None of those people are me. Season 11 is my favorite season, and I throw the first four seasons into the show's original run era. Now, it's not like I'm saying that every episode from season 11 or 12 is good. I took a hammer to ink lemonade myself, which came out three years ago, by the way. But I feel fairly confident that we're getting out of the show's dark age. But I've been wrong before. So here's the deal. If an episode comes out that's worse than anything on this list, I'll give it a full review, and then I'll eat my hat. Considering what's on this list, though, I doubt that anything is going to top any one of these 10 episodes. For the longest time, Spongebob was a very hated show. Like, a lot of people don't believe this when I tell them, but there were some people out there who were able to make a living shouting at this show about a kitchen cleaning tool making burgers. Some very sad and pathetic people that derailed entire reviews to go on talking about a dog that had nothing to do with anything, that probably should have gotten some kind of help. Ironically, this hatred came because the show was so loved. During the late 90s and early 2000s, Spongebob, as perhaps a hearty man would put it, created their childhood. I defy you, heart man! <laughs> It was truly classic comedy. It spat out classic episode after classic episode, with simple but memorable characters and many moments that just stuck in people's brains. It became a dominant cultural force that's about as influential as, like, the Looney Tunes. Get a hold of my wife. <laughs> SpongeBob is a character in a show that will transcend generations and influence waves of new artists. It already has. And then something happened in the mid 2000s. It started slow. We had an episode or two that did nothing but tortured Squidward. SpongeBob's voice got pitched up to an annoying degree. Please make it stop! <laughs> And there were episodes that ramped up the gross out as much as they can get away with. We were beginning to see that the darkness was starting to take hold. But it was right around the time that Spongebob decided to date a decaying Krabby Patty that fans of the show came to a horrifying realization. This isn't your average everyday darkness. This is... advanced darkness. Bad Spongebob episodes weren't just mediocre, like a lot of other shows that had gone on too long. They could be genuinely shocking, gross, or cruel. Only rarely were they funny. And the show's reputation sunk so deep that no one cared when a random internet idiot looked way too deep into episodes like The Card or Breath of Fresh Squidward, seeing things that just weren't there. Like, I'm not making this shit up. People actually did that, and nobody believes me when I tell them. What I'm trying to say is that in my eight years on this platform, I've grown. And I've come to regret a lot of my past decisions with this show specifically. SpongeBob has grown a lot too in the past decade. And while it does have an uncertain future with the passing of Steven Hillenburg and these spin-offs that aren't off to a good start, it's worth noting that this show has managed to do the impossible. SpongeBob was dead, a has-been to many people for years and years, back when I started of this thing. And while it has been a bumpy road still, here and there, the show managed to get back on the saddle and impress many again with episodes like Mimic Madness, Karen's Virus, and Spongebob's Birthday Bash, all of which we'll probably talk about in the other list. In the past, I would have been super eager to do this list at the earliest possible opportunity. Now I do it with a heavy heart. Let's take this list to remember how far we've come. This is the top 10 worst Spongebob Squarepants episodes, as of season 12. Let's get them, boys! Yeah! 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 
You ever watch paint dry? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. If you've seen this episode, you probably want to. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Two hours later. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. No, he's not going to. Not ever. This episode is seven minutes, uh, but you could have fooled me. One eternity later. And he's still at that fucking mailbox. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. The season 5 shorts weren't a bad idea, but they were definitely a squandered idea. Spongebob is a show that I could see really adapting itself to short form ideas. But the problem with that is that you need an idea, and most of these shorts didn't have an idea. This is an episode literally dedicated to doing nothing. It's not a coincidence that one of the shorts appeared on both of my previous worst Spongebob lists. Their ideas range from Patrick can't pay for lunch, to Patrick wakes up in the morning, to what's this guy's name? What's it to ya? Okay. There is such a thing as too simple, and waiting finds itself squarely in that camp. Oh brother, this guy stinks! This is an episode that I've wanted to review for like years and years. It was the next biggest episode that I wanted to tackle. But try as I might, I could not. Because with this episode, there is nothing to talk about. I can't even think of something to say for this list. Honestly, I'd prefer to hear Squidward talk about cancer than watch this again. Many famous fibbers and elected officials are cancers. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Remember Ink Lemonade? When it first came out, people treated it like it was the worst thing ever. That it was a sign that Spongebob was regressing back into its dark ages. When in reality, it was just a bad episode. A bit overhated, and when you get down to it, not even the worst episode of season 11. That would be a squirrel jelly. What hurt the show the most in Spongebob's darkest eras was that each of the characters had the pedal put to the metal on their worst attributes. Spongebob became annoyingness embodied. Mr. Krabs is nothing but a greedy business owner. A shell of his former self. Patrick was a stupid, callous, and cruel pinhead, and Squidward just became the world's depressed punching bag. However, there is one character that did seem to avoid most of this. That would be Sandy. Sure, she was in a bunch of bad episodes, I even reviewed one of them, Someone's in the Kitchen with Sandy, and it wasn't like she wasn't affected at all by the show's changing nature. She became far more focused on science than she was in the original seasons, and she also became a little bit more perfect and capable than she probably should have been. But she generally was one of the more pleasant characters to watch. That's until this episode where Sandy, uh, how do I want to put this? Big fat meanie. Yeah, th that's how I'd put this. So in this episode, Sandy goes on beating everyone up, and then she destroys jellyfish fields. That is more or less the entire plot of this episode. Alright, there's a little bit more to it. Sandy causes a problem by destroying everything, then she realizes that she's destroyed everything, and then she becomes a pacifist. And that means that she's not able to deal with the problem that she caused, until she decides to not be a pacifist. So this episode is Sandy causing a problem, and then not doing anything to solve the problem, until she's absolutely forced to. In which she solves the problem by doing exactly what she did to cause the problem. This, for some reason, is a 16 minute episode, even though it has a plot that would struggle to meet 7 minutes. It's just Sandy at her worst, with a few other problems sprinkled in. Season 11 is my favorite season of the show, but even I can agree that the wacky faces that they often relied on got to be a little bit too much. It makes the animation seem more frantic than energetic, and these expressions often come across as excuses for jokes instead of actual jokes. This episode did for Sandy what Demolition Doofus did for Mrs. Puff, or One Course Meal did for Mr. Krabs. And if you still want to like Sandy at all, this is an episode to skip. You should instead watch Pre-Hibernation Week, because everything else about this episode is recycled from that. Seeing jellyfish fields on fire is a special kind of fitting for episodes this bad. <laughs> Remember the splinter? Wait, we already used that joke. Whoever's writing this review is certainly a has-been, isn't he? We're talking about the splinter for what, the fifth time now? Which is about the millionth time this episode has been talked about. So some backstory. The Splinter is where it all started for me. Like, this is the episode that taught little kid me that some cartoon episodes were bad, and as such, it's the first episode I reviewed as an animated atrocity. Back then, I said it wasn't even top 10 bad for Spongebob. Stupid! You're so stupid! Uh, so we can all agree that the past never happened. I 
really don't know what more to say about this one. The Splinter is just a really bad episode. It's pretty gross, way too gross for Spongebob, which, while it did have some Ren and Stimpy inspiration, had some Ren and Stimpy writers, was never meant to be Ren and Stimpy, or even a continuation of Ren and Stimpy. The Splinter is gross-out humor without the humor. Even for Spongebob gross-out humor, this episode is bad. There was an episode of Krabby Patty Creature Feature, which was basically a Spongebob episode made by David Cronenberg. Here we are, Cronenberg Morty. A reality where everyone in the world got genetically Cronenberged. We'll fit right in, Cronenberg Morty. It'll be like we never even left Cronenberg world. And that episode was actually really good, because that episode actually had a plot to go along with it. And also because it was a horror-themed episode, where you'd expect to see some body horror. Is it a horror episode? No. Then why is it so gross? Is it a comedy? No, it's not funny. Is it a story? No, because there is none. I could say more, but let's be honest, you've all heard everything that could be said about this episode. My series started as infamous animation because the splinter was already well talked about by the time I started. So to spare you and me from having to try and pretend I have something new to say about this one, let's move on. <laughs> So, in case you haven't noticed, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of Spongebob episodes where the main crux of the episode is Squidward Get Hurt. And I might want to pick just one to represent the whole lot, or else this list would be just filled with them. I mean, there are so many episodes where the main point is Squidward just gets tortured that I can make a list on that alone. The only question is, which one of these episodes do I pick? They started in Season 4 with Good Neighbors, and it only went downhill from there, with this kind of episode basically becoming the main theme of Season 6. There is a ton I could choose from, though. Everything from Cephalopod Lodge, to Giant Squidward, to Squid's Visit, or maybe I can even pull one of the later episodes, like Squid Baby, or Little Yellow Book, or Patrick the Game. Or I could pick Smooth Jazz and Bikini Bottom, or Boat Smarts or literally a dozen other episodes. Like, even if you don't mind these kind of episodes, at some point when the list gets so long, you gotta realize that maybe this trail is getting a little overworn and you should try something a bit more creative. There's just so many selections that I can't pick. I'm, I'm gonna look up and see what other people have said. Oh hey, maybe this guy can help me figure this one out. Bit dramatic calling them torture porns. We're not like doing Saw here, thankfully. But let me see what you got. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. One eternity later. This man is an idiot and you shouldn't listen to a damn thing that he says. Breath of Fresh Squidward, really. Yeah, it's not a good episode, but wow, this guy is looking way too deep into shit. In the end, it came down to Choir Boys or Boating Buddies, which is a choice between annoying or creepy. Boating Buddies has this very claustrophobic atmosphere of being trapped with a stalker, so much that I put it on my top 25 most disturbing cartoon episodes. I don't know if I'd still put it there, considering there is a lot of Spongebob candidates that have come out since then, but I still do find that it has a rather creepy atmosphere. On the other hand, we have Choir Boys. 90% of this episode is off-key singing and Squidward screaming which actually sounds better than his singing. Which might be an issue because the episode is about Squidward singing. I will take Slide Whistle Stooges over this one any day. Boating Buddies is the one that I'm putting on the list. Ow! Why? Okay. Choir Boys is the one that I'm putting on the list. A lot of people seem to have a hard time understanding why people don't like this type of episode. After all, it's an old formula. We have the Roadrunner tormenting Wily e. Coyote, we have Bugs Bunny tormenting Elmer Fudd, and these are classics that no one would ever call torture porns. So, what's the difference? Quite simple, for an episode like this, the person being tormented must be the architect of their own misery. If Elmer Fudd wasn't trying to kill Bugs Bunny, then he wouldn't be constantly beat by Bugs Bunny. Most of these episodes are about Squidward either minding his own business like Good Neighbors or doing something innocuous, like this one where he's just trying to join a men's choir. Yes, he was a dick to Spongebob at the start, but that didn't cause Spongebob any misery. And even doing that didn't directly cause Squidward any misery either. Can I come? 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 No, 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 no. 
The only thing that causes Squidward any misery whatsoever is wanting to be in the men's choir. When a character is punished for following their dreams, it doubles the misery you get watching the episode. Not helping this episode is that Spongebob is... Not helping this episode. In the worst of these episodes, Spongebob can be better described as a force of nature, rather than an actual character. He's like a tornado that the episode wants you to sympathize with, even though he's blind to the world around him and just destroys everything. <laughs> There are a few episodes that some people point to for the reason why they quit the show altogether. When they felt that Spongebob had sunk to such a low that there was no way that it was ever going to come back. Mine was the splinter, but some people point to episodes like Atlantis Square Pantis, or Spongehenge, or A Pal for Gary. Unlike some of the other episodes on this list, I haven't spoken about this one in, like, years. So, let's go down on a rundown of the problems with the episode. First of all, it picks a plot that does not work. Period. Ever. In all of art and literature, this plot has never been anything other than garbage. Someone brings in a new pet, baby, or... whatever. And it makes a huge mess. And the old mainstay gets the blame for it. It's not funny. It's never been funny. You cannot make this plot funny. It does not work. It's mean-spirited and unpleasant, not funny fun to watch, and despite all of this, it's one of the most cliched plots imaginable. It's so cliché that everything I just used to describe the problems of this plot are considered clichés in and of themselves. The only different thing about this episode is that the animal is based on a nudibranch. What the fuck is a nudibranch? Ah, oh, oh yeah, that, that, that's a perfect resemblance of Puffy Fluffy. The first half of this episode, Spongebob super cares about Gary. Until, you know, Gary's in trouble. Then Spongebob doesn't seem to know his eye from his asshole. I swear, the first three minutes of this thing are a completely different episode. Spongebob's sheer obliviousness in the latter half of the episode is some of the most baffling and raging things that you will ever see on this show. Spongebob can be a little bit stupid, but when the Nuda branch is holding up Gary in its mouth and Spongebob is still shouting at Gary for being mean to Puffy Fluffy, Hell, when Spongebob is being eaten by the thing and still blaming Gary, like, even Patrick isn't that stupid. No, I'm serious. Even in Patrick's worst performances, I doubt that he would have made this mistake. And keep in mind, up until season 12, I've seen all of them. I've seen as stupid as Patrick gets. It's not funny if I don't believe the character would do this. And I know that Spongebob got bastardized through season 6 and 7, but even this goes past believability. And to bang on the cliches again, Gary didn't do anything to deserve this. He's not even in the Squidward camp where he's like a grump. He's just a general pet. He's not personified enough to make slapstick against him funny. Gary works best to be seen as the straight man in Spongebob and his relationship, both because it's unexpected and within both of their characters. But all too often these Gary-focused episodes are either just generic pet plots or beating the hell out of Gary for no good reason. The best Gary episodes are the ones where he can talk, because those are the only times where the writers seem to know that Gary is an actual character. Then again, in this episode they seem to forget that Spongebob is an actual character as well. This is, uh, not Spongebob's worst appearance, by the way. That's in the next episode. <laughs> One thing that I used to be really into was creepypastas. Specifically, cartoon creepypastas. They generally fall into two categories, though. One being that every single character in every cartoon ever is based on a dead kid that the creator knew. Nowadays, we don't get too many of these, because the only people who make those kind of creepypastas hate the very concept of creativity and want the entire world to die. The other type is the Lost Episode creepypasta. It usually goes into a banned episode about dark subject matter, like suicide or violence with a bunch of hyper-realistic hyper eyes and hyper-realistic blood. Spongebob actually has one of these. Okay, it has two. One you probably haven't heard of. It starts fairly typically with Spongebob once again trying to get his boater's license, but this time it goes horribly wrong. Spongebob crashes so many times that he ends up leaving Mrs. Puff with a permanent injury, and being so incensed, Mrs. Puff legitimately tries to murder Spongebob. Now, the difference between Squidward's suicide and Demolition Doofus is pretty minor, all things considered. Demolition Doofus is actually a real episode that was really made and really put on television. And if you're wondering, no, this isn't just me looking too deep into things. This episode is literally about Mrs. Puff literally trying to get Spongebob killed in a Demolition Derby. Why are you still <laughs> Literally. They make this abundantly obvious. could finally be rid of Spongebob. Forever! <laughs> but there is no other way that you can interpret this. 
<laughs> and I mean that in the worst possible way. <laughs> I don't know what's worse about this episode. That Mrs. Puff is turning to attempted murder, or that SpongeBob deserves it. Sheesh, I don't know what she's so upset about. I think she looks gutter this way. It's lines like that that make people turn off a show and never turn it back on. What am I supposed to say about that? Oh yeah, I accidentally cut off your legs through my own carelessness, but I think you look better that way, so stop complaining. SpongeBob has always had a degree of naivety, a blindness to the world around him. Hell, even the earlier seasons pushed a little far sometimes. Tell me more about summer break. You're what, 20 years old? How do you not know what summer is? I digress. But there's a difference between a childlike naivety and whatever the hell is this episode. Please tell me, how the hell does the attempted murderer make the more likable character in an episode. To be blunt, this episode is so bad, I think they should have straight up stopped using Mrs. Puff after this one. Like they stopped using Iggy after Arnold betrays Iggy. Because this is the kind of episode that a character cannot come back from. Mrs. Puff has always had a shady past, but was left vague as to why she did things like skip town. And that brings me to one of the bigger problems, that it's not out of character this episode. I could totally believe that Mrs. Puff would do this. I can't look. Yes, I can! It's far too believable, especially if she's been pushed over the edge. Even in later episodes, for me at least, Mrs. Puff hasn't been able to wash the stink of this one off. I can't watch any future Mrs. Puff episodes without thinking about this one in particular. The fact that this is number 5 on the list says more about the episodes coming up rather than this one. This is just one of those episodes that just puts you in a bad mood. And I feel there's something fundamentally wrong with it. And I know, I know. There are tons of other cartoons about one character straight up trying to kill another. Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes. But in that regard, Spongebob is a different show. The characters are meant to be like analogies to a relatively normal suburban life. In that sense, it's more similar to Simpsons than Looney Tunes, where if Homer legitimately tried to kill Bart, it'd be very unpleasant and known as one of the worst episodes of the show. I don't even feel like mentioning the doctor saying Mrs. Puff will never inflate again, leading her to attempt to murder SpongeBob in a demolition derby, which leads to her puffing again. Because I stopped caring about this run on sentence after I got to the Mrs. Puff attempts to murder SpongeBob part. <laughs> Hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Free French fries? Fried potatoes? SpongeBob You're Fired is the most boring, desperate, painful slog of 22 minutes that you will ever have to get through. This episode had such little thought put into it that they couldn't even get the title consistent. The title card looks like this, but Amazon and other digital distributors actually remember to put in the punctuation in the title. So there's a comma between SpongeBob You're Fired and an exclamation at the end. How bad is an episode if they can't get the title card right? You're probably wondering. What do they put in this 22 minutes that makes it so painful? NOTHING! ABSOLUTELY NOTHING! I mean this with no exaggeration. Waiting has more of a plot than Spongebob You're Fired. I reviewed this one when it first came out and I haven't watched it since then. And uh, it's only soured in the years that I left it on the back burner. Three minutes straight of this episode is Spongebob crying. <laughs> The premise of this episode starts out broken, and it doesn't get better. The plot is that if Spongebob gets fired, Mr. Krabs will save a nickel. You know I love you like a son, but you can't argue with a nickel. I feel like this is one of those things that I'm looking too deeply into, but come on, Mac! Spongebob is literally the only reason you make nickels in the first place. If Spongebob was not your fry cook, you would have zero nickels. You would be broke. You would be broker than broke. Episode upon episode has made it clear that the most ridiculous thing about the show starring this talking sea sponge that lives in a pineapple is that you were able to open a restaurant without this man boy sponge cheese thing! SpongeBob being booted out of the Krusty Krab is such an overused idea. So many episodes show that the Krusty Krab goes to all hell if SpongeBob is not at the grill. Even in the pre movie series! He burnt my Krabby Patty. He burnt my fries! <laughs> He burnt my shake. Why do you want to eat this stuff anyway? Run for your lives, everyone! It's the appetizer! <laughs> there are two types of jokes in this episode. Puns that aren't funny. You're canned. Here's your pink slip. I'm giving you the axe. 
and the same variation on SpongeBob can't make any food except Krabby Patties. Four times in a row, we see that SpongeBob just can't make anything but Krabby Patties. Except snail food. He's able to make snail food though. So good you'd think that he'd actually start a snail food business. Could you imagine that? An episode where Spongebob gets fired due to Mr. Krabs' greed, and he comes up with a secret recipe of his own to make snail food and starts an empire. While well, Mr. Krabs becomes destitute. Might not be the best thing ever, but like, all of the pieces are here, and yet they're left like a cat's vomit on your fresh new carpet. Oh, and Sandy is feeding toxic sludge to homeless people. I don't need all of my characters to be morally upstanding. In fact, I've written quite a few very bad moral characters, but I do need something to like about them. And this, let's do science without giving a damn if anyone gets hurt, uh, puts Sandy in the league of the morally worst people in history. There are other episodes worse than this one, but I can't think of any episode that I'd like to rewatch less than this one. Among the Spongebob fandom, Truth or Square is known as a big fat lie. The commercials hype this to all heavens, promising special guests, the biggest secrets will be revealed. Spongebob and Sandy will get married! And when we all got to watch it... You promised these children Krabby the Clown, but all I saw out there was... Jeepy the Cheapskate! Now, there is exactly one Spongebob's biggest secret, and it's not his middle name. It's Millicent, by the way. No, it's the Krabby Patty secret formula, and you can only pull a training video once. Especially after you hyped an episode like this to high heavens. It's time I told you the Krabby Patty formula. Ah! To be fair as I can, in the enduring years, the staff has claimed that this was like meant to be a parody of clip shows and those big soap opera style rating scraps with evil twins, random diseases, random marriages. And if any of that is true, it comes across as a failure to read their audience. It's easy to say in the writer's room that they know we'll never actually reveal the Krabby Patty secret formula. But you know, kids are going to assume that you're actually going to tell the truth. But Sandy and Spongebob's wedding, that has to be totally ridiculous, right? No. Like, not at all. A not insubstantial portion of the Spongebob fandom actually ships Spongebob and Sandy. I don't blame the staff for not knowing this, as at the time I don't think shipping was even a term, but a lot of people both then and now do want Spongebob and Sandy to be together. And it's not unfair that some people have seen chemistry between the two. And no girl ever wants to dance with a fool who went and ripped his pants. Like, Spongebob went on a date with a Krabby Patty. It's not out of the question to think that Spongebob could have feelings for Sandy, the girl that he is closest friends with. But let's strip past all of the glamour, all of the advertisements. What are we left with? Uh, yes, this is Patchy the Pirate for Spongebob Squarepants. Believe he's expecting me. I sent him over 400 letters this week. Well, you have 22 minutes of a Spongebob episode, which is as much plot as Spongebob you're fired, and 30 minutes of some of the most awkward live-action bits that you've ever seen. No, seriously, I've seen celebrities in, like, TMZ camera-in-the-face tabloid-style shit act more naturally than they do in this thing. You wanna see Spongebob as a fetus blood his own umbilical cord? No? Why not? What's wrong with you? Everyone wants to see that. I mean, to the show's credit, they got Triumph, the insult comic dog, who is best known for feuding with Eminem. Yes, y yes, that, that Eminem. The rapper. One of the most controversial rappers of all time getting into a feud with a puppet dog. And no, kids aren't going to know who Triumph is. That's it, I'm done. The 415 bus should be along any time now. Do I, uh, need to go on? Alright, so the biggest point of contention about this episode is that Plankton gets tormented by Mr. Krabs to the point of being paranoid where he lies down on a road specifically wanting to get hit by a vehicle to end it all. When Spongebob brings this out to Mr. Krabs, Mr. Krabs laughs while erasing a picture of Plankton on paper, meaning it is quite clear that he is happy that Plankton is going to be out of the picture. There's contention about suicide jokes or jokes about dark subject matter in cartoons, which is definitely a debate that's worth having, but we don't have to have it here. Because this isn't a joke. Like, it's it's written as a plot point, not a joke. 
it is a plot point in the Spongebob episode that a character is so distraught that they are actually attempting to commit suicide. And they're not doing this in a cartoonish, silly way either. Plankton isn't doing this silly cartoon way of trying to end himself, like, I don't know, becoming a Krabby Patty. No, he is lying down in the road. A real way that real people really commit suicide. For reasons that actual really real people commit suicide. Whether or not you find this disturbing, it is one of the most thoughtless things that I've ever seen put into a children's cartoon. If you're wondering, I don't think that anyone intentionally planned on doing this. Actually, I know for a fact that the writers didn't plan to have this turn out as horribly as it did. This isn't an act of malice. This episode is simply a victim of complacency. SpongeBob has had suicide jokes in the past. Uh, someday, but not today. Why not put a suicide joke here? Nickelodeon ordered a million billion episodes, so we gotta can this one as soon as possible. No, no, there, there's no need to look over it. We're on a time crunch here. We gotta make 25 episodes about Squidward getting his life destroyed. When we write things, it is our job to make sure that we're communicating what we want to communicate. A comedian can make any topic funny. Any non-PC triggering traumatic topic you can think of has had a really good punchline in the past. And that's good. It's not just good, it's important. Laughter is a part of catharsis, and if we can laugh at our pains, our traumas, and these darkest parts of our lives, we can heal from them. But it is a dangerous line to walk, cause if you screw up, you'll end up with idiots on the internet shouting obscenities at you. I've grown a lot of endurance watching cartoon episodes since I started in 2013, but some episodes still just make me uncomfortable no matter how much I've watched. They are episodes like Ren Seeks Help, Pain Bow, any episode of Big Mouth, and One Course Meal. This is an episode I don't even like thinking about. The only thing this episode serves as a reminder is to watch what I'm writing when dealing with dark subject matter. Not because I'm afraid of offending people, but it's important to remember that you need to make it as clear as possible to what you are communicating with your writing. <laughs> Dishonorable mentions. Okay, if I were to list them all, this video would be three times as long. There are damn near a hundred bad Spongebob episodes. That is not an exaggeration, there's probably more. So, uh, Face Freeze. Face Freeze is my dishonorable mention. It's number 11. Y trust me, you don't wanna- you don't want the full list. It's gonna go on forever. <laughs> I go back and forth on what's my most hated episode of Spongebob. In the end, it came down to two choices. One course meal and... Well, make up your mind. Is it water or fire? Pet Sitter Pat. So, a part of this entry is going to come across as a defense piece for One Course Meal. One place I have to give credit to that episode is that, for all intents and purposes, it is original. There are a countless number of Krabs vs. Plankton episodes, but it was one of the few times that they engaged in psychological warfare. It did happen before in Fear of a Krabby Patty and afterwards in Plankton Paranoia, but it is still among very few other episodes. Meanwhile, Pet Sitter Pat is a rip-off episode, and a blatant one at that. So what though, there are a lot of episodes that blatantly rip off another one. Housewarming is just a rehab of Jellyfish Jam. The difference, though, is that no other episode tries to rip off A Pal for Gary, which is not only one of the worst episodes of the series, it was from only a season ago. One Course Meal is known for one particularly bad moment, and that one moment is probably worse than anything in Pet Sitter Pat. But Pet Sitter Pat is horrible moment after horrible moment. At the start, Gary goes splat, then we see him starve for five minutes, while constantly being tormented with food just out of reach. It's, uh, not fun watching an animal that just has cat fur personality starving. And it just goes downhill from there to the point where Patrick comes at someone's house pet with a flamethrower. Please tell me, how does Patrick Star be a less likable character than the rampaging monster? That's not a rhetorical question, it's something that I genuinely want to know. How'd they do it? This episode didn't just make Patrick the worst character on the show, but one of my least favorite characters of all time, and quite possibly one of history's greatest monsters. To say that Gary did nothing wrong would be redundant. The episode is literally just about abusing him in just unpleasant ways. And as for Patrick... Yeah, yeah. And remember to dry him off really good. Right. And don't forget about the list. Okay, I get it, SpongeBob, I get it, I get it! He says this after basically eating all of Gary's food in front of him. And yeah, Patrick gets hit after this, but the gags don't work because he doesn't care that he's getting hit. He's like, uh, how do I describe him? Giant piles of bubble gum! Yes, that is exactly it! 
Patrick is like a giant wad of bubblegum. It doesn't matter what you do to it because it feels no pain, and there is no catharsis in seeing any of this happen. Meanwhile, they make sure Gary very much reacts to the pain he's in, which doesn't work either because he did nothing wrong. At least in a pal for Gary, Gary was acting a little bit annoyed with Spongebob, just the tiniest bit. Here, all Gary wanted was dinner, and he gets beaten senselessly. It is the laziest, most unfunny, least competent, biggest rehash, most unpleasant 11 minutes that this show has ever spit out. And it's the kind of episode that just makes you want to abandon all of society and live among the jellyfish. And I'd be doing that myself, but I gotta do the best list to wash the taste of half-baked escargot out of my mouth. Hey, you've reached the end of the video. The names scrolling by right now are of all the wonderful patrons who donated to help keep this channel alive. If you'd like your name in the credits, head on over and make a donation yourself. Also, be sure to check out my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for exclusive content and previews of my upcoming videos. I've also got a forum where you can discuss anything that has to do with my content and connect with the rest of the community. To find anything that I mentioned, just visit my link tree in the description down below. Lastly, be sure to subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends. Oh, and thanks for watching.